Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work Q. Well, Composer X is the Italian-American composer Vittorio Giannini, really a fine composer based in Philadelphia. And the work, which those of you who know Giannini will know, um, is his Symphony Number no. 3 for concert band, for band generally, concert or otherwise. You know, there aren't that many great band symphonies out there. There's Hindemith, of course. I mean, by like major composers, lots of people wrote for band and sometimes very, very well. Hovannis wrote a lovely symphony for band. Morton Gould wrote a nice symphony for band. And Giannini wrote this third symphony, which is the iconic symphony for band. It is gorgeous. It is fabulous. It has wonderful tunes. The opening, oh my goodness. Da, 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 da. I mean, I can't do it, but you know. There, I got it, more or less, kind of, sort of. It's just brilliant. It's in four movements. It has a certain jazzy, bluesy feel in the slow movements and in the more lyrical passages. It has an absolutely beautiful scherzo full of twilight harmonies and lovely, soft, double reed and single reed textures. Oh, it's just great. Absolutely great. It's brilliant. It's so much fun. And anybody who's ever played the band has probably played it, I mean, if you're in a decent band. And anybody who likes band music has heard it. And we absolutely have to celebrate this absolute, this, 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 this masterpiece um, of band writing. Now, now, the reason I chose this, of course, is because nobody knows anything else that Vittorio Giannini wrote, number one. And number two, for that reason, if I have to present one work to the evil god Cancrus hands and say, look, you know, you can't eliminate everything but one work per composer because Giannini wrote this fabulous symphony and it's for band, which means that most people don't know it as well as they should. And even more than that, it we deserve to hear everything else the man wrote because because he must have done other good things besides this one symphony for band. And actually, he did. I mean, I've heard some other stuff, and it's, it's really, really good stuff. He also wrote other works for band that are quite fine. He's a good, solid, neoclassical composer in the same sort of uh, vein as Persichetti and, 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 and Walter Piston and, you, you know, that whole American school of, of you know, perky neoclassicists. They wrote very, very well-crafted, high-quality music that nobody cares about. And thank God that Giannini wrote, Giannini wrote one work for band, because at least it means that bands will play it. And I also have to give a shout-out while we're talking about you know, the Giannini Band Symphony to the American band tradition, which I have talked about before. There is nothing like it in the world, nothing at all. I mean, just the Ohio State Band, which is the largest all-metal band in the world, and the, the big state college bands, and the band competitions that we have. I used to, to go to the, the, the muster at Bridgeport, the Barnum Festival every year, um, and watch the band competition. And there was one in Milford called the Shoreliners that I sort of marched with on, on 4th of July and my Cub Scout troop. And, and I mean, they're just bands. There are bands everywhere. And superb college bands, amazing college bands, and jazz bands and dance bands. And bands. It's, a whole, it's a whole tradition. It's like, it's like the tradition of choral singing, you know, in England. England also has a wonderful band tradition, by the way. You know, the Grimethorpe Colliery Band. You know, they're just, these are, these are terrific, terrific examples of, of musical life that so many people aren't aware of, and particularly pop music people and classical music people too, but millions of people are participating in this tradition. I mean, if you go to a football game, a major football game, you know, Michigan State or Ohio State or, you know, one of those, University of Illinois, you know, one of those just amazing state schools. Um, and, you know, you go for halftime. You don't even have to watch the game. I know some people watch the game, but I go for halftime. 
because I just love watching these bands. I first heard Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony because it was played at halftime during a football game. I mean, <laughs> these arrangements and things of all this stuff, it's, it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And so, and so the great god Cancrazans, the evil god, is not going to eliminate the entire tradition of band performance and band repertoire. He wouldn't dare. He would lose like 99% of his potential worshippers if he did, first of all. And second of all, he's getting, he's getting kind of mellow. I'm beginning to think that a lot of this was a stunt because now that I'm doing the best recordings by specific artists as well, He's become um, something of a collector, an aficionado. And I don't think he's going to want to get rid of anything soon. So let's just keep going and, and let's keep uh, tempting him with all the musical wonders that just lie in wait. So keep on listening, friends. Thank, friends, friends, your friends, right? Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.